December 1980, New York City. In the shadows of an upscale apartment block, a man is waiting with a gun. He had a clear history of, of, of violence and, 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 and mental illness. The devil or someone in his head was telling him to do it, do it, do it. And then he opens fire. Pull the trigger five times. Within moments, one of the most famous musicians on the planet has been shot. I remember saying to myself, I'll never forget this, I know this guy from someplace. And then it, it, it kind of hit me. I said, holy smokes, this is John Lennon. He is critically injured. Within minutes, he is dead. No one expected that John Lennon would be assassinated. When I heard it was someone from Hawaii that grew up in Decatur, Georgia, I knew immediately it was, it was him. Um, it, it, it's horrible. But far from fleeing the scene, the killer offers himself to police. Chapman actually had his hands up. It soon transpires that the rationale for this horrendous crime is the assassin's narcissistic personality. He's the real John Lennon. He's the one that should be famous. He's the great man. And Lennon doesn't deserve to live. That was the whole point of this, was he wanted to commit a murder, to bring attention to himself. Killing Lennon would give him the power and strength that he wanted. This is the story of the original stalker killer, the man and an incident that changed the world of celebrity culture. You need to know that they're out there. There are more Mark Chapmans out there.